So once again, nothing happened to the income statement. Note at the end of the year, we're gonna have to provide, say this detailed report to the, to the tax preparer, which will give them the line by line items. And then again, you might want to give them the added documentation, breaking out the actual purchases so they can accurately put it into the system. This, even after a year, is not gonna have too much detail in it nothing compared to not when compared to like a cash account because we don't purchase the equipment all the time it's not a day-to-day -day transaction so i'm going to go back up top and uh so there is that nothing's on the income statement okay let's do it again and i'm going to say we're going to buy another piece of furniture and equipment so i'll go back to the to the to the right i'll just enter it directly into here because we're going to pay cash for it again and the second month of data input will do more transactions that are non-cash related. So we have to finance it in, in there. We're gonna do more transactions that are gonna be using cash in the first month here. So I'm gonna say this is gonna go for, let's say it's on the 11th this time. And let's say this time we bought it from Amazon. Amazon, I think that's how you spell it. Tab, that's gonna be a vendor, proper vendor. Notice again, we have this issue that I might buy multiple things from Amazon, including possibly supplies and sometimes large items, which would go under property, plants, and equipment. I'm gonna say this is for uh, fixed assets. And we once again might want more detail in the memo explaining exactly what we purchased, 7,000. And then I'm just gonna put this into the furniture and equipment. The key here being because it's a large dollar amount and because we're gonna have to depreciate it because the tax code requires us to, we're gonna put it on the books as an asset not expense it even though we paid cash for it let's go ahead and save it and go back to the middle tab and update run it again run it and then into the checking account and so there now we're building up our our data there is the transaction if i go into it it is an expense form i can add the documentation if i if i needed to so that we could we could uh, give that to our accountant, closing this back out, scrolling up. And so there is that. The other side went into the furniture and equipment now having 100,000 in it. So there it is going back up and back. Now there, there's a couple issues with just that we talked, we touched on earlier with the recording of the, of the fixed assets. Notice it's in the drop down here because that dropdown is by account type. These two are fixed asset account types. If I was to add multiple categories like equipment and then furniture and then building, then the question is, I'm also gonna have a related accumulated depreciation account. So you could have one accumulated depreciation account for all categories, but oftentimes it's kind of nice to have a separate depreciation account per category that will line up to the categories of depreciation that are on the sub ledger that will be given to you or provided by your tax accountant, hopefully. Remember that the accountant will have to do it on a tax-based system, but they can usually provide also with their software, since they're already doing the data input, a book-based system as well. You also have to think about whether or not you want your books done on a cash based system or a book based system with regards to the depreciation because a book based system would be more proper but if you do a cash based system then you don't have any of these differences between your books and the and the tax books so it's kind of a you know there's pros and cons so talk to your i would talk to your accountant when you're setting up your fixed asset accounts and how you're going to record depreciation and how they're going to be doing the tax software and whether their tax software has book depreciation and that kind of stuff. So once you have the categories together, then there's kind of an issue as to whether you wanna have sub accounts to record the related accumulated depreciation to the fixed assets. You can see here that we've got accumulated depreciation above the furniture and a fixture. It should be the other way around. It's got that alphabetical order issue here, which we could adjust with account numbers, but that kind of means we have to use account numbers, of course, or we can try to adjust it with the sorting mechanism to see it in descending order so that we have it this way, or uh, we can use sub accounts. And so we'll dive into that a little bit more, especially when we get to the adjusting entry component.